Thank you very much. Ambassador Louis Cordero, Chair of the Permanent Council. Ambassador Riyad Insanali, Permanent Representative of Guyana to the OAS. His Excellency Luis Almagro, Secretary General, representatives of OAS member states and permanent observers. In my last appearance before this council on May 13, I reported on electoral developments in Guyana prior and subsequent to the March 2nd general and regional elections. Today, in order to make the best use of the time available, I will focus on specific aspects of the post-electoral process that were not detailed in that previous statement. As a reminder, however, an OS electoral observation mission was present in Guyana from February 20th to March 14th and observed both the discipline services vote on February 21 and the main poll on March 2nd. The mission also observed firsthand the very irregular occurrences in the tabulation process for District 4, the largest of the 10 regions, which altered by more than 20,000 votes the results as recorded on the statements of poll and tainted the overall process. A key development in the post-electoral period was the decision of the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM, on April 3rd, to proceed with a national recount of all ballots cast in the 2020 poll. This was an important step in light of the significant concerns shared by many stakeholders that the results provided up to that point were flawed. On May 4th, GCOM published Order 60 of 2020 in the official Gazette of Guyana which established the legal basis as well as the procedural and administrative guidelines for the recount. The order notably states in its third preambular paragraph that, and I quote, the president and the leader of the opposition and all contesting parties agreed to a CARICOM proposal for a total recount of all electoral districts as a means of assuaging the contesting parties and determining a final credible count, end of quote. Implicit in this clause, but also explicitly stated by all key stakeholders, was the expectation that the results of the recount would be respected as the final word on the 2020 election process. Two members of the OAS mission observed the recount from May 6 until its conclusion 34 days later, on June 8, 2020. They reported that despite some organizational issues, the process was conducted in a professional, transparent, and impartial fashion, which allowed GCOM, the political parties, and other stakeholders to accurately determine the results for each polling station. The findings of the OS observers were shared by the CARICOM team of scrutineers who had been assigned a key role in Order 60 in verifying the recount results. The official results of the recount found 460,352 valid votes. Of this number, the largest share, 233,336 votes, was awarded to the Opposition People's Progressive Party Civic, the PPPC, while the ruling Partnership for National Unity, plus the Alliance for Change, the APNU plus AFC Coalition, garnered 217,920 votes, a difference of 15,416 in favor of the PPP Civic. These results, but for minor adjustments, reflected the results contained in the original statement of poll and conclusively established the extent to which the figures for Region 4 were altered to 
to give the ACNU plus AFC coalition an overall majority. The recount order required that these results be submitted to GCOM by the Chief Elections Officer, along with a summary of the observation reports prepared for each ballot box during the recount, in order to facilitate a declaration of the election. On June 13, 2020, the Chief Elections Officer submitted his report. In addition to the verified results, he provided as was required by the recount order, detailed summaries of the observations made by persons entitled to participate in the recount. These observations included allegations of anomalies and irregularities that had been made primarily by representatives of the APNU plus AFC coalition. OS observers and other stakeholders present for the recount had indeed noted the insistence of some political party representatives on including such allegations in the observation reports prepared for each ballot box. A significant number of these allegations concerned unsubstantiated claims of voter impersonation. Neither the OS Electoral Observer Mission nor any of the other accredited observers who visited polling stations on election day, hundreds of polling stations, I must point out, have reported any significant instances of objections based on impersonation made by the polling agents of the APNU plus AFC coalition who were present in most, if not all, polling stations. In his June 13th report, the chief elections officer went beyond the mandate issued to him in the recount order, and a judge that 275,092, 275,092 of the 460,352 votes verified by the recount were invalid based on these unsubstantiated allegations. That is, by the stroke of his pen, he summarily discarded 60% of the ballots that had been counted and recounted. He adopted the specious methodology of discarding every single vote in those ballot boxes where unproven allegations of impersonation had been made. The council should note that there are only two stages at which ballots can be set aside before the results of the elections are declared. At the polling station, where the ballots are first counted, and during a recount, if one is conducted. Beyond that, the invalidation of any ballot is the sole prerogative of the High Court pursuant to an election petition that can be filed only after the results are officially declared. Having taken on to himself the authority exclusively assigned by the Constitution to the High Court, the Chief Elections Officer advised that the electoral process in every one of the 10 districts for which he himself was responsible could not be deemed credible. And he issued new results using the votes that he had unilaterally and arbitrarily determined were valid. These results put the APNU plus AFC coalition at 125,010 and the PPP Civic at 56,627, a whopping majority of 68,383 in favor of the APNU plus AFC coalition. In a statement on the issue on June 15th, the OS noted that all stakeholders had agreed to abide by the results of the recount and called for a process of transition which would allow the legitimately elected government to assume office. A motion filed in Guyana's Court of Appeal on June 18th 
by a private citizen, challenged the credibility of the recount, and sought to have the Court of Appeal assert jurisdiction over matters pertaining to the election of the president. In a majority decision on June 22nd, the court asserted jurisdiction and ruled that votes in the context of the election should be interpreted to mean, quote unquote, valid votes. The argument present the same argument presented by the chief elections officer when he assumed for himself the authority of the High Court. The Court of Appeal instructed GCOM to determine the results of the elections on that basis. On the following day, June 23rd, the Chief Elections Officer submitted a fresh report to the GCOM Chair using figures other than those certified in the National Recall. The new figures presented by the Chief Elections Officer discarded 115,844 of the votes from the recount process and gave at no plus AFC 171,825 and the PPP Civic 166,343, a majority for the at no AFC coalition of 5,482. The OS, in its statement on this development, noted that GCOM was already in possession of a result based on the valid votes cast on March 2nd through a recount exercise that was approved by all stakeholders. The statement urged that any challenge to the result determined on this basis should be brought through an election petition filed in the High Court after GCOM had declared the election results based on the recount data. The matter then moved to Ghana's final appellate court, the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. On July 8, the CCJ ruled in a unanimous decision to set aside both the June 22nd ruling of Ghana's Court of Appeal and the June 23rd report submitted by the Chief Elections Officer. The CCJ also ruled that GCOM should ensure that the Chief Elections Officer submitted a new report along the lines indicated in the recount order. The OS welcomed the CCJ's ruling, but expressed concern that efforts continued to be made to avoid compliance with its orders and to further prolong the term of the current government. GCOM Chair subsequently instructed the Chief Elections Officer on three further occasions, on July 9th, on July 10th, and again on July 13th, to prepare and submit his report on the March 2nd general and regional elections using the valid votes as determined in the national recount. The Chief Elections Officer did not comply, and at one point on July 11th, issued yet another set of results completely ignoring the results of the national recount and reverted instead to the declarations made by the returning officers prior to the recount. This included, of course, the blatantly flawed results declared for Region 4. On July 13, GCOM's chair set aside those 10 district declarations issued by the returning officers. A further motion was thereafter filed in the High Court of Guyana by a private citizen seeking to oblige GCOM to declare the election based on the original 10 declarations which had been struck down by the chair and to use those declarations, including the declaration for Region 4, instead of the recount data. Yesterday, Guyana's High Court ruled that the recount order was valid and that the March 13th declarations could not be resurrected. In her ruling, the Chief Justice also noted that the Chief Elections Officer was a functionary of and subject to the direction of GCOP. He is therefore required to act on the Chair's instruction. Immediately upon delivery of the judgment, 
the legal counsel for the Atnum Trust AFC coalition indicated that it intends to appeal the Chief Justice's decision. It is distinctly possible, I must say, that this matter could again traverse all the way through to the CCJ. In closing, <coughs> the elections are held to determine the will of the people. And once the people's wishes are clearly stated, they must be upheld. The people of Ghana have been patient for much longer than can reasonably be expected while they await the result of a process that was by all accounts well conducted on election day. They must wholeheartedly be commended for this. They deserve a peaceful transition of government based on the majority vote as reflected in the recount and in support of democracy and the rule of law. Allow me please, finally, to make this comment. A litmus test of any democracy is the peaceful and orderly transfer of power if that is so ordained by the express will of the people. Sadly, Guyana has failed that test. The people of Guyana are not to be blamed. They express their will in a commendably peaceful and orderly manner on March 2nd. But the pernicious actions of a few have wreaked considerable damage to Guyana's image and reputation. Even if this debate is soon and satisfactorily resolved, it will perhaps take a generation and significant institutional reform for that damage to be fully repaired. The people of Guyana did not deserve this. I thank you, Mr. Chairman.